Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. So as titled, this video is not designed to be clickbait. And if you want the really quick takeaway version, what happened was that I purchased these pair of Nike Vaporfly Next Percent off eBay. I thought they were gonna be genuine. When I got them home and actually had a look at them, I determined that they were fake. And so then I bought a second pair, a genuine pair off Nike.com. And then when I compared the two, for me personally, over a 5K distance, I found these ones, the fake shoes, to be ever so slightly quicker than the genuine ones. So when I found in my testing that the fake Nike Vaporflies were actually ever so slightly faster than the real ones, I thought it'd be interesting to make a video, explain how I tested them, my specific results, and also talk about how I determined that these ones were fake. So I've been interested in the carbon plate technology in running shoes for a while now. And as an amateur runner and triathlete, I've been wanting to try them out, but I was kind of put off by the high price and I didn't want to drop all that money not knowing for sure whether or not they were actually going to benefit me. So what I thought would be a good idea was to have a look on eBay, try and find a reasonably priced secondhand pair, try them out, and then if they are faster and if I am faster than them, great. I can always buy another pair brand new from Nike or wherever. So I scoured eBay for a while and I was obviously aware that there were fake shoes out there. Um, it's very difficult to tell from photos. So I was generally looking for what looked like genuine listings. And I bought these off a seller who had great feedback. In the photos and even up close, these look genuine. It wasn't till I got them back and did a really close check on them that I determined to be fake. And to be fair to the seller, I'm pretty sure that he wasn't aware that they were fake. He wasn't a runner. He would bought them for fashion purposes and he barely used them. He offered me a full refund and was really genuine and a really nice guy actually. So. I don't have any qualms about that. Having a look at them, there was a few telltale signs. The most obvious one is the swoosh decal, which is on the bottom of the shoe. And the way that this one is on the fake pair is that there's quite a large border and you just don't see that on any of the, the genuine ones. So that was a bit of a, a red flag for me. The second was the heel cup. So there is a little piece of material inside the heel, this black, almost sponge-like material. And on the genuine ones, this protrudes probably about a centimetre almost. And on these ones, it's almost flat. It really doesn't stick out at all. Another thing is the insoles. The insoles in the genuine ones are glued in. And in these ones, they come out very easily. Uh, they're not glued in at all. And they're kind of a really cheap foam like material uh, you can almost see it kind of coming apart there apart from that everything else and if you don't know what you're looking at it took me sort of half an hour looking at these really closely and umming and ahhing and comparing them with online pictures to determine that they were fake what kind of threw me though was when i watched a few other videos online and the first thing that you see with fake ones is they obviously don't have a carbon plate in them so they will bend and these ones don't they're very stiff and there is definitely something within the sole here that is giving them that rigidity so i wasn't even when i found the sort of telltale signs of the swoosh and the, the heel cup i was still a, unsure because well why would a fake shoe have a carbon plate in but i think that these ones do they are the same weight as the genuine shoe so there's no weight penalty there and they have the stiffness the foam is definitely different it's not the zoom x foam it's not as kind of alive and as spongy it's a lot more sort of dead but they have that rigidity there the first thing i wanted to do was try them against my existing race shoes which are a pair of brooks hyperion race flats these are pre-carbon uh, plate technology shoes super flexible very lightweight what i've set all my pbs in over 5k and 10k and tested these out against them straight away off the bat doing some treadmill testing running at similar paces what i was noticing was a lower heart rate in the fake vapor flies and i'll come on to the actual testing methodology in just a minute 
but what I was noticing that pound for pound, these were about two to 3% better than my Brooks raised flats over the 5K distance. So this then sparked further interest because I thought, well, if fake ones can be two to 3% better, that's already great. Imagine what real ones will be like. So I went ahead and purchased the next percent twos uh, off nike.com, genuine pair. And once I got these and did a few comparisons, it was kind of, yeah, there's, there's, it's night and day that these are real and these aren't. They obviously just as rigid, so they both have the rigidity, but it's the Zoom X foam that gives the shoe, I think it's unique characteristic and feel. It's super squishy, but also super responsive, if that makes sense. And so running in the two shoes is quite a different experience. Now, when it comes to the testing methodology that I employed, it's very difficult to do a completely scientific test on this. And despite trying to be as accurate as possible, obviously there's gonna be a number of factors. So don't read too much into this. Obviously the sample size is one, it's me. And so right off the bat, the results are only valid for myself and, and there's no reason why that they would translate to a wider population. As well as that small sample size of one, the other thing is it's very difficult to keep everything the same. I did the test on a treadmill, so obviously weather and environmental factors were the same, but your fitness and your day-to-day -day variation, even if you're testing at the same time of day, feeling the same can all have a real impact on the test. And what I did was a 5K time trial with the first 4K at 340 per kilometer and the final K at 330. And this was a sort of seven and a half out of 10 effort for me. So it's just around threshold, probably just ever so slightly underneath it. And I'm working hard, but it's very easy to do and I can replicate this. I can run that sort of pace day in, day out. And so what I did was a 5K in one set of shoes. I'd then get off 45 minutes, stretch, a little bit of rest, back on and do the test again in the other pair of shoes. And what I would do was switch that up. So I would obviously wear the fake vapor flies, for example, first, then the genuine one second. And then the next time I would do it, the genuine ones I would wear first, and then the fake one second. And I ran this experiment a number of times. That allowed me to get a big pool of results, which I could then analyze and look at the data. What's really interesting with these shoes is that I think a lot of the media hype makes says that the shoes make you faster. And actually that's slightly incorrect. What the shoes are actually doing is making you more efficient. So what that allows you to do is run at the same pace as you previously would with another pair of shoes, but for a lower oxygen cost. And that manifests itself in a lower heart rate. Or you could run at a slightly faster pace than your existing shoes at the same heart rate. And so the result of that is a faster shoe because you can complete the same distance in a faster time for the same heart rate. And so when analyzing the data, because I'm comparing the shoes running at exactly the same pace and speed, what I'm looking for is the lowest heart rate. And what you can do is actually do a little bit of a calculation of something called efficiency factor. And that is calculated by taking your normalized graded pace and dividing it by your average heart rate for the run. And that will give you a number. Obviously this is user dependent because it's based on your specific heart rate. But by having a look at that, what you can do is then compare those two numbers and the higher the number, the more efficient the shoe is because it's allowing you to run faster at a given heart rate. And that is the fastest shoe or the best shoe for that distance. And so that's exactly what I did. So let's jump on in and have a look at some of the results. Now, this is an example of one of the runs that was recorded. I'm using a piece of software here called Training Peaks, which I use for pretty much all my activities and analyzing them. And here is the 5K that was done on the treadmill. So we have a total of 5K. You can see here we have a graph which has pace and heart rate recorded. So pace is in the green line. And as you can see, that runs pretty much consistently at 340 pace all the way until the 4K mark here, where then it steps up to 330 pace for the final kilometer. 
And then the heart rate values there are recorded uh, as shown by the red line. And as you'd expect, there's a rise pretty early on and then a steadying off and then a very slow increase to a maximum heart rate towards pretty much the end of the activity. And then if we have a look over here on the right hand side, we have the important figures for the analysis. So we have, there we go, the average heart rate, which was 163 beats a minute. The average pace, which is 339 per kilometer. And that's also shown as the normalized graded pace. Obviously there was no elevation uh, increase in this because it was run on a treadmill. So as you'd expect the average pace and the NGP are exactly the same of 339. And then basically with a bit of maths uh, that the software will do for you, it takes the normalized graded pace and divides it by the heart rate and gives you this efficiency factor here, which is unique to you as an individual of 1.68. And that efficiency factor is then the crucial figure that I've used to compare the genuine vapor flies to the fake vapor flies. So here is a summary of the results. So as you can see, the left-hand column has the efficiency factor recorded for each of the runs by the fake vapor flies, and the right column has the uh, efficiency factors for the genuine ones. And I did a total of six runs, and the shoes were swapped around each time. So for example, the first run was done in the fake vapor flies, then a short break, the second one done in the genuine ones, and then the next time round, it would have been run firstly in the genuines, and then secondly in the fake vapor flies, and then vice versa throughout. So trying to make it as fair as possible. And as you can see, the results across both shoes are very similar. So there's very little variation. So that's kind of one of the benchmarks of a, a reasonably decent methodology. We're not seeing huge variation. So that, that's a good sign. The average of the fake vapor flies, 1.7, and for the genuine, 1.68. So only a very small difference there, but you can see that for each run, regardless of whether it was run firstly in the fake ones or firstly in the genuine ones, that the fake vapor flies were always slightly more efficient than the genuine ones. So the main takeaways from these results is that the difference between the two shoes is about 1.2%. And so what this actually equates to, for the same pace, the fake shoes actually give a lower heart rate of around 2 beats per minute. So pretty small, but it's measurable. It's demonstrated there with the results. And for the same heart rate, over 5k, the fake vapor flies give a 14 second quicker time. So that's really interesting. And if you do a bit of an extrapolation, take that forward to the marathon distance, which is approximately eight and a, a bit times a 5K, you're looking at about two minutes. That's some of the results that, you know, these shoes have kind of shown for, for elite level runners that the, the marathon times are somewhere in that ballpark of about two minutes quicker than they were pre-carbon shoes. So hopefully that was interesting looking at the results. Obviously, remember those disclaimers, sample size of one, the shorter distance of only 5K. There's no proof uh, that these would then replicate over those longer distances of 10K, half marathon, marathon as well. It would be interesting to test them and maybe I will if I get the time to do that. There's plenty to speculate on exactly why those differences exist, why the fake shoes are as fast, if not ever so slightly faster than the genuine ones. My personal thoughts is that these, despite being fake, definitely have a carbon plate inside or definitely have some sort of plate that's giving them rigidity. I would be interested to cut them open, but obviously because they perform well, I wanna carry on using them. So maybe I will do that one day when they're completely at the end of their life and see exactly what is inside. But there is definitely something there. They don't share the same ZoomX phone as the genuine ones. So maybe for me over the shorter distances anyway, that ZoomX phone really doesn't come into play all that much, but it certainly is interesting. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts and comments. Do drop them below as to why you think the results may have come out the way they did. And if you've got any questions um, or anything else that you want to drop in below, please do that. I'll do my best to get back to you. Hope you found this interesting. Thanks very much for watching.